everybody, this is Maniac for Lego, and here we are again with another comparison video. Today's comparison video is going to be a short one, literally, because we have some pretty small sets to work with today. On the left, we have Emmett's Car, a Toys R Us exclusive building event, which included the ability to build Emmett's car, and also Emmett's fly car. We're not going to be talking about the fly car since it's irrelevant to the main topic of the review, but we will still be talking about the main build, which is Emmett's car. I think it's the one most people prefer building in any way, so it's better that we go with just as it is. But just acknowledge the fact that this is a two-in-one build and has two sets of instructions. This set has 41 pieces total. It was available in 2014, and it was available in, I'd like to say, February 8th, 2014, at 12 to 2 p.m., but it's also going to be available in sometime in April. Stay tuned for a news segment about that info. On the right, we have set number 3177. This is an actual Lego set compared to the Toys R Us event on the left. And this was Small Car. Very simply, just called that. A Lego City set from 2010. Includes one minifigure. Um, has 43 pieces. And ages 5 to 12. It was a small box set. It was not a poly bag. And this retailed... For about five dollars. So looking between the two we already have one difference and that is that this one doesn't have a minifigure whereas this one already does. That's because as a Toys R Us event they would be less likely to give you a free minifigure um, than to give you just a whole bunch of free pieces. So we'll take a look at the minifigure that's from the small car set. Kind of a regular commuter figure. Um, I've been told that this might be like a doctor but I don't really know exactly because they thought maybe this is like a small doctor's car and he's carrying a suitcase with his, you know, with his medical supplies. But I think he's just a regular commuter. Even the way they show him in the Lego City sets, um, you know, in some of the images and the instructions. He has no back printing on his face, but he does have back printing on his torso. And I do actually like this torso. It's appeared a couple different places and it's a really nice one, in my opinion, for white um, casual shirt. You know, not something that's businessy, but this is something that we can wear as a sweatshirt for a minifigure. And I also like the green pants with it, because, well, green's my favorite color. So, now that we have our minifigure talked about, let's start with the small car. This is the first version that was made, and there have been a couple versions in between, um, so I'm sorry I don't have all of them available. I believe there was another blue and red version of this made, uh, but correct me in the comments about the different variations of the small car. Now on the top of this, we get a small roof that pops off. And we have a small brake light on the top of it. So if you're driving along, you'll see the brake light on top of the car instead of on the bottom. That does happen with some cars sometimes. Now it's easy to fit our minifigure in there. We'll first show off what the inside looks like. Very crammed, but still enough space to fit a minifigure. And hopefully he can drive. Kind of makes me worried, though, since this is like a, a smart car, and I've heard some not-so-great things about smart cars when they get into accidents, you know. It could cause serious injuries. So the minifigure fits in here very easily. It's very little room for him to move his arms, however, because it's intended to kind of show like he's driving from the front. A lot of the arms are just going to pop up, you know, in place through the hinging, so, and just, you know, colliding with some of these door pieces on the sides, that's something normal, and at least right here, it looks like he's driving the car, and his hands aren't, you know, his hands are on the wheel. Now, for the suitcase, we fit that right in the back, there's a little space for that. You can also fit it in sideways for more convenience. Let me pop the lid back on, I mean, the roof back on, and there he is inside. There's nothing on the bottom, but we can see a little bit of hint of green. There's also a little bit of green on the inside of the car, the one by 2s are in a couple different places in this car. I think there's only three of them in here, and two of them are used with the steering wheel underneath the blue steering wheel piece. And this one is kind of basic, pretty, you know, <laughs> what you see is what you get, you know? Engine's pretty close to the, the rest of the dashboard, and, you know, not much else you can really do with this except just to ride it around and make a small space 
you know, for, for parking. This would be easy for parallel parking. And it's made on that very simple base that we get with some of the modern sets, but it's also been in some of the classic LEGO City sets as well. Now, for the Emmett's car, we don't have the minifigure with it, but we'll use the minifigure from the small car as a way of comparing, just to see if he still fits in there. And he's a basic minifigure, so it's no big deal as far as, you know, trying to fit certain heads or, you know, hair pieces or anything like that. So, as we look at this one all the way across, the first thing you might notice as a difference is the, is the rear view mirrors. Now, we do have some attached rear view mirrors, which gives us a little bit of extra width to the car in comparison to its predecessor. A little bit more lifelike feel to it so that you, when you're driving, you can have your rear view mirrors here and you can see for traffic behind you so you can change lanes. And we also on the back, a lot of, you know, the same pieces as before in almost the same exact color scheme. Um, you can see there is a difference on top there. They have some more black, whereas this one had some more white. We also have the front is a little bit different. We have black as a grate. We have these um, clear pieces that are still like these, but these are instead as a tile because these weren't invented at the time. Underneath, you can see the bumper is different between the two. And you can also see from the inside, we don't have a brake light on the back. So how are people going to know when he's going to stop? As we look on the inside, we have pretty much the same look, except this one has a white area to make it a little bit more realistic. Instead of a blue steering wheel, we have a white one. Or at least the console is white, not the steering wheel itself. You know, also, you can see underneath there, between these two, there are one, one by one pieces used in that section. There are two used over here. So the steering wheel is actually a little bit lower in this model than in the other model. And it's also, again, looking more realistic and has a better color scheme um, to fit with the driving itself. You could probably lower the arms a little bit here so that you can fit them inside. Still has enough room to fit an average minifigure, so no problems there. Although from the front, it's hard to tell if he's actually driving since you can't see the steering wheel. But if you look from the side, maybe he's going to reach the steering wheel. We also have room in the back for the luggage, same as before, same amount of space. So overall, between these two models, there aren't a lot of differences. It's basically the same one that you get from 2010. Um, but this version has, these are the differences from the recent version. Um, to the previous version. The new one, Emmett's car, does not have a brake light. So it doesn't have that one by two piece. It sometimes gives trouble for when you're fitting figures with hats or larger accessories on their head, um, which is actually a bonus to me. Although I would have liked to see it anyways, maybe on top of here or underneath or something, or maybe in the space right there. So at least you can acknowledge that there are lights on the back of the vehicle. It has mainly the same colors and the same types of pieces throughout the model. Um, but we have a lot of the difference in the front area. We have different colors that are used on top of here. They are used in black instead of white. We do not have any green pieces that are used as one by twos. We have them in gray instead. We have two pieces. We have two rear view mirrors that extend the model's width in comparison to this one. Both of them have the doors that can still open up. No problems there. That's why I didn't go over it the first time. I close it with its own doors. <laughs> uh, we also have a little bit of difference in the front design, just for, mainly for the headlights and for the bumper, making this a little bit less in piece count. Um, and we also have that difference in the inside. Um, again, to make it a little bit more realistic, make it more lifelike as a small car. Now, I still think the six wide is a good width for it. Um, and in comparison to some other modern LEGO City sets, it still works very well um, with other cars. Now, a lot of my custom cars are actually made on a four wide scale of, you know, if this was about the size of your, let's say a Honda Civic or something of that type of car or that size relatively, without the actual, you know, hood on top. You know, you can see that this is still a good fit for even some of your older models 
or your other mocks fitting into a city. Although this one is obviously larger, this still fits the idea of it being a small car or, you know, kind of based on the smart car as mentioned before. It's still formidable as far as play goes and it's really good with accidents because it's a Lego and it's not going to, you know, have any interior problems like actual smart cars do. Um, I actually do like the, ex the extensions on the side. They add a little bit more realism, as mentioned before. And to me, this is a superior model. Although I like this one being a readily available one, you know, since the Toys R Us version is something you could only get if you get there in time, because I know a lot of people missed it out the first time, but they will be available to get it a second time if they go to Toys R Us. You have to get there at 12 o'clock. Let me just tell you, if you missed it before and you're not familiar with the building events at Toys R Us, if you get there before 12 o'clock and you watch as they set up all the... You kind of have to look around, but, you know, if you get there with enough time that you can see them setting up the tables and putting out all the pieces and such, then you'll be sure to get a spot where you can just stand in line, collect your pieces, and then go on your way either building the model here or building it at home. Um, but I will make a news report about the new set date for this because this is backed by popular demand, most likely because either people missed this one out the first time or the variations between them, or this one just has a better catch in style um, than the predecessors. Or maybe just because it's a Lego Movie based model. Because this was shown in the Lego Movie as Emmett's actual car for driving around. So, thanks for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments which one of these models you like better. Thanks for watching this video and we'll see you next time.